coming, Vince. I've been doing this a long time. Um, a number of you have been here for a number of these to hear me introduce them. Again, I'm doing it again. Uh, I've been to all 13 of our media days, and I know a lot of the team has as well. And it, frankly, this one's a little bittersweet uh, because it's likely the last one we'll do here in Phoenix. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, we're, that's for a good reason. Going on to uh, do better things for the team and uh, be able to do these somewhere else. But it certainly uh, gives the opportunity for one to want to just be a little nostalgic. And so I went back and looked at my prior song and dances um, <laughs> as part of reviewing for this. And you know, I, I think that can be informative to look back sometimes, uh, particularly to make sure that we have done what we said we're going to do. Uh, those of you that have been here for a number of these know that most of my, many, many of my talks, as I've been up here before you, have talked about consolidation over time. Uh, we talked about lessons learned from consolidation. We talked about how the industry needed consolidation. We talked about how U.S. Airways didn't have to participate in consolidation, but if we did, it might make us better. Uh, you've lived through all of those. Um, in 2009, up here talking about the things the industry needed to do to make itself well, why it had been so dysfunctional for so many years, and the things we needed to do to make the industry better. Uh, those included, it was too fragmented, so back to consolidation. Those included um, a lack of management's uh, approach to labor, which was also dysfunctional. Those included a lack of focus on what the customer really needed, which was operational reliability. Uh, that included uh, the government's policy toward airlines. And we also talked about how we had management teams in the past in the industry that cared more about market share and uh, beating each other up than they cared about profitability and return on capital and things they could do to actually make their company as strong as it could possibly be. Uh, back in 2009, we talked about all those things, and what we also said, though, is that we thought the industry was improving on all fronts. And I'm happy to report we were right about that. Uh, now, four years later, the industry is much stronger because each of those things are vastly improved, with the exception of the government policy point. Uh, but we're making, at least, at least we haven't slid backwards much on that one, so we're holding the line. We'll talk more about that in the Q&A. But the others are much improved, have had a major difference and why this industry is so much stronger today. Uh, in 2010, uh, I was up here talking about what we called the profitability imperative. Through 2008 and 2009, as the industry went through $150 barrel oil and then a, a global recession, uh, US Airways, like most airlines, lost a lot of money. We lost something you know, over a billion dollars over two years. Uh, our resources were completely tapped out. And in 2010, we were, it, it, we were talking, therefore, in 2010, this meeting, about how we had to be profitable. And we spent all our time telling you how we were going to get there. Happy to report we did that. We made over $400 million in 2010, the second best in our history at that time. And then we were up here in 2011 talking about how we had to prove it was real. Uh, that is, the industry had gotten itself better in 2010, but we needed to go show that it was better, not just in good years, but we could do this in bad years. And 2011 provided us that opportunity. Uh, oil prices were as high in 2011 as they were in 2008. Um, it was no better in 2011 than it was in 2008, but U.S. Airways made over $100 million in 2011, uh, about a billion dollars better than we did in 2008. Uh, we did what we said we were going to do. We did prove it was real. And then in last year, uh, the thing we had was controlling our own destiny. Uh, what we talked about was we wanted to make sure that we at U.S. Airways were in a position that we could decide what was best for us. Uh, we didn't want to be in the position like some other airlines have gotten themselves, themselves into, uh, like the old US Airways, like the old TWA, where they had no choice but to consolidate to save their companies. We wanted to be in a position, as we described, much like Continental was uh, when they decided to merge with, with United Airlines. They didn't have to. They had an airline that worked completely, perfectly well on its own, but they chose to because they thought it was best for their company, their employees, their shareholders. That's what we wanted to be, is where we wanted to get ourselves, as we talked about last year at this meeting. Um, and again, we've done that. Our team went through destructive profits this year and, pr and proved that we could run standalone forever or perhaps go do something else if we cared to. So, um, you know, that's, those are kind of the presentations, but as I think about all this, you know, the, 
the media day memory uh, that really encapsulates the last 13 years best for me is a question that we got last year uh, from one of the students. Some of you are here remember that John and Elise invited a number of uh, journalism students to last year's media day and during the QA they asked questions and being students they asked some good questions. Um, and uh, one of them was, uh, you know, what motivates you? What is it that drives you to do all this? And I did kind of sad answer that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll encapsulate again um, about, but it's important because it really does, I think, encapsulate kind of what we've really been doing here over the last 11, 12 years. Um, and before I do that, though, I'll get to the sad part. Uh, in fairness, you know, we, 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 we like to do things for the greater good, but we, we're motivated, of course, as many of us are by personal things. We have egos. Um, we have ambitions. We're, we're really competitive. Um, so we like to win. All those things motivate us. But uh, when we stop and think about what we're really doing here and, and how it could be for the greater good, the story I told this around with again, I can breathe, is uh, back in 2001. Uh, as I was uh, sometime in the fall of 2001, I'd been named CEO of America West September 1st of 2001. At the time, uh, we were, uh, we thought things were, were in really good shape. We, uh, we, we'd had a tough year in 2001. We just uh, lined up some financing that was going to get us to the winter. We felt good about our prospects in 2002. Then, of course, 9 11 came around, the financing fell away, and the prospects were dramatically changed. So we found ourselves being the airline in the worst shape, and the one most needing the federal home guarantee. And we were fighting very hard to get that done. Um, early on uh, in that fight, uh, we were told no. Uh, we were just out of the city of Washington, D.C., waiting to hear back. Hoping he'd call into a meeting that he said hey, we're going to fax you a letter. They fax over a letter that says you know, we're not we're not going to bring your loan at this time, which meant we were done because at this time there was no more time for us. Uh, so uh, it was it was uh, it was a bad day, and I find I'm flying back on the long flight from Phoenix to DC, and I'm sitting in my seat um, thinking about what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, uh, worrying about myself personally. It's like for God's sake, you know. 39 years old, I've been CEO for a month, and now we're going to play for an eight. Um, it's not going to look good on the resume, so what am I going to do about this? Uh, and, you know, finally realized, look, I've got to go talk to my crew uh, and make sure that they at least, um, you know, do my best to put on a good face and to talk to everybody. So I go to the back, talk, find this slide that I, that, I, that I remember all the time and say, and try very hard not to forget uh, that I want to talk to. And, she asked how it was going, um, but this, this was all highly public at the time. Uh, asked how it was going, I was in D.C. for this reason. Uh, I couldn't lie to her, it was, it was tough, it's not, very, it's, not, it's not going well. Uh, these guys don't, the program's not designed to get loans, and they don't want to do it. We're fighting really hard. Uh, we're trying to get it done, but it's not going well. She said, what's going to happen if we don't? I said, well, we're going to file bankruptcy. Hopefully we'll be able to fight through bankruptcy, and, you know, frankly, you know, we might liquidate it. Uh, at which point she just looked at me and said, that, you know, Steve, we, we can't do that. You know, I've been doing this job for 15 years. This is, I did this straight out of school. I'm really good at it. Uh, I love what I do, but this is what I do. And I don't have anything else to do. I have to be a single mom now. Um, I have all my child care set up around, my, around the flight schedule I have. I can't do anything else. Uh, but there are no other options for me. So, at any rate, that depressed me even more. I went and sat back down. <laughs> uh, realize, you know, this isn't about me. Uh, managing this job is to serve those that are out there uh, doing what she was doing. I mean, this was this was after 9/11. This was a time when customers were afraid, afraid to fly, uh, and airline employees around the world were buttoning up their uniforms and going to work, um, and you know, flying five flights a day, and without any fear, or maybe with fear, they were doing it, um, and. You know, our job is to make sure we're doing everything we can to serve them so the people that work that hard uh, that do their jobs that well can know that their company and their management is going to do everything they can to provide a company that will be there for them. So, um, long story short, we, uh, by the time we landed, I, I decided that not at this time meant not at Friday at 5 o'clock 
that didn't need Monday at 8 o'clock. So we worked all weekend, we came back with cavalry, um, and eventually we got the loan. And that story uh, is what's motivated us on, through all the stuff that, that we talked about the last 12 years. Now when you fight that hard and you realize um, you know, that's, that's what you're fighting for, when the economy turns down in 2004 and everybody's filing bankruptcy and you're a little airline in America West and everybody's getting their costs down here and that's the, only cost, that's the only advantage you had, you don't just sit still, you go do a merger with US Airways. Um, and when in 2008 and 2009, when oil prices go to 150 and the economy tanks, you don't say, oh, gee, we tried. You go and make sure you get, you go make sure you raise the liquidity and you fight through all that. And that's what this team's done. And that's what we've done. Um, and it's made an enormous difference. And again, as I talk, as I think about, um, as I take the time to reflect over all these media days, uh, what I, what I, that, that story just comes back, because that's really been the story of the last 12 years. Um, we have done what we set out to do. We're proud of what we've accomplished. Uh, what I feel really good about, and what I know our team feels good about, is we can go look any of our employees in the eye and tell them, you held up your end, we held up our end, and we got this done together. And that makes us all feel really good because we got it all done together. So that's the uh, trip down memory lane piece of the past media days. So now, fast forward to media day 2013. Um, generally, what I do is I go to the, as I start this is talk about the past year and bring you all the speed and what's transpired over the past year. I don't need to do that as much this time. <laughs> you guys have written a lot about it. Uh, you've kind of lived it with us. There's been much written about what, we, what we've been doing over the past year. So I'm not going to spend time reliving all that. But I do want to spend time on two uh, untold stories that I think are important. And again, probably <coughs> it's not so much that they're untold, they're certainly undertold versus the rest of them. Uh, the first is the incredible US Airways team. You know, I know almost every year, if not every year, in these media days, I start by telling you I'm really glad you're here because what I really like about this event is you get to see people other than me or Scott, who you see all the time, and see the, the whole team and how incredibly and, and how great they are. Um, and that's true again today, but it's really true today uh, because uh, the events of the last year have focused way too much on me and way too little on the people who have really been out there uh, making this happen. The, uh, I think it's fair, I, I know it is fair to say, I have less to do with this merger than any of the people are going to stand here talking to today. Um, that's, that's just the way this transpired. This wasn't me, this is these guys. Um, Scott led our team, labor negotiations, the UCC talks, talks with American, talks with investors, talks with creditors. Scott was either leading those or right in the middle of everyone throughout the whole thing. Derek was out there talking to investors, talking to creditors, running through all the financial models, working with the UCC, working with the American team. Lisa was out there working with all of you, uh, working to communicate with our employees, communicate with our labor unions. Steve was working his tail off, uh, negotiating agreements, working labor agreements, working politicians, working communities. Robert was negotiating with the TWU, working with all of our suppliers, and running our airline, uh, all that was going on. And best yet, they did it all as a unit. A truly phenomenal team. That just simply, they, none of them have got the credit they deserve for what they've accomplished. Um, that team, by the way, extends to our advisors um, Jim Milstein, Milstein Company, Latham Watkins, Barclays, Joel Frank, uh, a number of others just did phenomenal work on this. We had these guys on telephone calls, coordinating telephone calls every day, five days a week, uh, all year long, um, every one of them. And there, there, of course, there's other work going on besides these calls. This is just we're all going together every day and make sure we're all talking to each other and know what's going on. And every one of them got on. No one big time this and said, oh, gee, I can send an associate to listen to the call. Um, and as a result, they, became, they really were part of the team. They weren't just consultants. They were part of the team. And we're extremely thankful for them as well. And then, while the senior leadership team was spending most of our time working on this, the other officers that you see in this room, the rest of the US Airways team, were out producing um, in a phenomenal way, and they stepped up and simply hit it out of the park. We had, well, we were, we were spending a lot of time on phone calls. They went out and produced record revenues, 
factors, record travel, record load factor, record yield, record revenue per ASM, record on-time performance, record baggage handling, uh, and record profitability. And along the way, the highest performing stock in the Fortune 500 for the, for the year. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. And they did all that because they're still good at what they do. So, look, I think that's a story worth telling. And I wish some of you would write it. I realize it might be kind of hard to write. Um, but if you don't write it, well, just know this, it's the truth. And um, I want to be sure you know it. I want to be sure that I use this opportunity to thank all those people who did those things. I, I will say this, um, it was undoubtedly the best all in performance that I have seen by a team uh, in my 27 years in this business. I don't even know how to get close. And that's the teams I've worked with and the teams I've worked against. Uh, an unbelievable team effort, and they deserve all the credit. Uh, the second untold story is the role of the labor unions. And again, I know some of you will say, oh, Jan's story's been told, but I haven't read it at least in the way that I do it. You know, the fact is, what the labor leaders of both American and U.S. Airways did in this transaction is unprecedented, I think, anywhere, certainly in our business that I know really well. You know, the fact of the matter is, um, in the past, um, the right way to behave as a labor leader, this isn't meant to be pejorative, it actually is like, the way in the past that labor leaders stayed in office. Uh, was when things get really bad, if you just hunker down and just keep saying no. Uh, fight everything. Force anything bad to be forced upon you, agree to nothing, um, and simply say, we're fighting for status quo, we're better, and there are no creative alternatives. And fight like crazy, and if, and things, if, if indeed things are forced upon you, of course it wasn't your fault. You did everything you could to fight it off. And gee, if you hadn't fought, it would have been a lot worse. And look how well you did fighting things off. And that's, and that's been the historical um, labor uh, take on what to do in times like this. And again, it's like that, that sounds as though uh, I'm being ignored or not. It's, it's just the nature of the beast and what most teams have done in these situations and what, and what, is, is what has been most effective for them in staying in their roles. These guys didn't do that. Uh, they went completely different. They stuck their next out in completely different ways, starting with the American team. Um, the, the unions, in all cases, started out by, one, going out and hiring world-class advisors, um, something I haven't seen before. AF, AF, APFA hired um, Jeffries, APA went and hired Lazard. Uh, these were guys that we wanted to hire, but they'd already been hired by the unions uh, to work as we were looking to hire advisors for us in this transaction. That's never happened before. Um, they, went, they wanted to make sure they, and, 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 and that's, that, by the way, was sending them to a lot of grief from their members because those, those firms are expensive. Uh, and they're using up union dues on advisors that are really expensive. Uh, but they did it because what they knew is they wanted to have the best advice they could. And they needed to have advisors that were as good as, as the people that they were negotiating against. Um, they, all, they, so they got themselves educated and then they went and proactively pursued alternatives. Um, they were, you know, I, I'm not sure who exactly contacted who, it doesn't really matter. What I know is this was collaborative. And they were as engaged in, in, in creative alternatives as we were interested in talking about creative alternatives. And, and the result is we worked really well with each other and they served their members really well. And then for the U.S. Airways uh, labor leaders, you know, you just imagine how they feel, they see and read about how their management team is off working on deals with another airline's labor, with another airline's labor unions, uh, and not working with them. Um, they also have the uncomfortable problem that the American labor, the American unions, the American airlines is bigger, so the, so the, um, the employee base is larger, so the number of people in the union is larger. That doesn't necessarily bode well for them as union leaders, uh, or certainly for their union, uh, but. You know, they listened, and they got engaged in the process at the right time. And they, by being creative and aggressive, and not just saying we're going to say no, figured out how to ensure it, that this was better for their members, and then they embraced it. So the result is that all of our employees and all the people that these unions represent are much better off uh, than they would have been otherwise. And we are really grateful for their leadership. So, um, 
as I think about last year and uh, you know, kind of the themes as we were going through it, there are two themes that kept coming back throughout the year, and they're really consistent with those two untold stories. Um, the first theme uh, that kept coming up as we were going through this was relationships matter. Uh, we found ourselves just struck over and over again um, how important certain relationships, ones that we hadn't had in years, ones that we forgot about, ones that, you know, we wouldn't even, frankly wouldn't have known they existed. Uh, people that we touched or touched us over all this time uh, became extremely important throughout this transaction. And they just, and it just kept coming up. We all of a sudden be in a meeting and say, oh, this is because I got to work with something else so many years ago. Uh, and every time that would happen, uh, and as it continued to happen, we got to this point just looking at each other and saying, no, relationships matter. Capital R, capital M, it's not a sentence, it's a title. It meant everything for this. It was, it was, a, it was all that we've done over all these years was coming together. And the, and the way that we knew or worked with people and treated people was, was uh, coming together to help get this done. Um, and the people we worked with trusted us and wanted to work with us, and it was incredibly valuable to us and meant a lot to us. So, uh, while I say that, uh, what that really is about is untold story number one yet again. Those relationships weren't mine, they were the teams. Um, they were Elisa's relationship with you all. Uh, they were Derek and Scott's relationships and credibility with investors and credit that had built up for its honor. Steve's relationship with labor leaders and politicians and the bevy of consultants that found themselves involved in this transaction. Um, Robert's relationship with suppliers and our operating partners. Um, all of that came together and was extremely important to us. The second thing that kept coming up was we could not let these people down. We, uh, every now and then in this transaction, we, uh, there would be times we'd say to ourselves, gee, you know, maybe this didn't work. Um, maybe this is the time. And the reality is we were controlling our destiny. We didn't have to. There were show you results. We were, we're, we're just fine. Um, so there were times we said to ourselves, you know, we do this now. Um, but it seemed like pretty much every time we'd get ourselves to even start to think that somebody uh, would do something in support of us, just sticking their necks out so far uh, on our behalf, in support of us, uh, generally, generally the labor units again, uh, either through public statements or filings or things like that. And we just began looking at each other and said, well, we cannot let these people down. Uh, they are supporting us, and we're not going to leave them out there alone. And that comes back to our untold story number two, which is these labor leaders were so creative and so forceful and so supportive that we had no choice but to support them. Uh, and we got it done together. So anyway, that's the past year now. Again, much of what you live, but uh, I'd encourage you, please, uh, it takes some time to think about those two angles because they certainly are ones that are important to me and I think are better angles than the ones that I've been told. Um, and now we start to look to the future. And as we do that, the same things that got us here in the past are going to guide us in the future. That's, that's why it's the same old story, same old song and dance, uh, because they have to be the right fundamentals, the right values, uh, the right things to do on an airline, the things that have gotten us this far are going are to work as we go forward. Those include really good management. We're going to work together uh, to take the best of the best between U.S. Airways and Americans' management teams. And what we're going to put together between them, I assure you, we're going to have the best management team in this industry. Uh, second, focusing on the customer and including a focus on airplane, on airline operations, the safety, and reliability. And then a focus on our employees, and engaging our employees, and making sure that they know that we. Uh, are, are here to support them and give them the tools they need and have respect for what they do as airline employees. And the same two themes that got us in the past year are going to guide us to move forward. The first theme again, relationships matter. We've got a lot of relationships that we forged in the past. They're going to serve us well, and we need to deliver for those people uh, that, have, that have established those relationships with us. We plan to do that. I include you, by the way. I hope you understand you have jobs to do. Um, and our job is to make sure that we're open and candid with you. Uh, we will do that and continue to do that so that you, uh, that you, that you know you can trust us uh, and that you know when you're talking to us uh, that what we tell you is what we believe and what we know. 
Uh, but we have many other new relationships that are beginning that we need to build the same way we've built the one over the time. Uh, those include treating people with respect, having integrity, working hard with the right intentions, and building trust in our team. Uh, we've done that now for a long time, and we're really proud of that. We'll keep doing that, and we believe as we do that, we'll be able to uh, build new relationships that will help us uh, as we move forward. Theme number two, again, we can't let these people down. I think my flight attendant from that airplane in 2001 is okay now. We now have an airline uh, where she can go. And so long as she shows up and does her job, uh, the airline will be here for her. And I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. But our work getting done. We now have a lot more people behind. And not just to ensure that they have jobs, but to ensure they have great jobs. They need, they, they need, they need, they're counting on us to get these airlines integrated successfully. They're counting on us to give them the tools they need to do the jobs the way they know how to do so well and do it the way they see fit. And they're counting on us to get their pay and benefits restored to the level of their peers and the other network carriers. So they put their trust in us, they're counting on us, and we are not going to let them down. So anyway, that's the overview of how we got to where we are. My colleagues, who again, are the true heroes of the story, are going to tell you more about what we're up to and where we're headed as the day unfolds. Uh, I'll just I'll just leave you with this. I can tell you we're up to a great start on this merger. <coughs> Sorry, we're up to a great start on the merger, as you'll see. Uh, we are very pleased with the work today. We're very pleased with how the teams are working together. Uh, and again, you'll see more of that as we go through. So. Thank you for your time and attention, uh, and thanks in advance for your time and attention to our team. Uh, you're going to be very impressed because they're impressive people. Thank you very much.